uh, it's up to the author and authority of the uh, contract author as to whether they use bold face or underlying mechanics. Depends upon what you're doing. And you have to know what you're doing. Uh, interested in learning the fundamentals. Well, you're in the right place. This channel that you're on right now has the fundamentals. In all the videos on here, I've got over 100 videos on here. The fundamentals are in there. Just study at www.youtube.com forward slash Jason Matthew Glass. You're welcome to it. I invested the time to create these videos. It's contingent upon the studier to invest the time in studying them. And I appreciate the viewership. I would like to learn how to syntax legal papers like indictments. Uh, yeah, same thing. Come on here and the, the syntax mechanics, they're all here. For this claim, it's sensation of the knowledge quest with the question asked method is with this question by this claimant student. Um, I think what Jason is asking, Jason, call on Jason hyphen space XR hyphen four is asking how you would ask a question in correct sentence structure. Now, first of all, I'd have, I have to uh, audit your sentence here. You're not using hyphens in your compound facts. The capitalization is not consistent in your compound facts. Uh, therefore, what you have done is put your entire sentence into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun because of the lack of the hyphens. The capitalization, you know, the volition is the most important thing. And I can guess that you didn't intend on being inconsistent with your capitalization. But if you're going to capitalize the fact on one side of a hyphen, you have to capitalize the fact on the other side of the hyphen as well. That's rule one, rule equal. Also, you have two position lodial fact phrases in front of a verb, before the verb. You have a cause and a concern and then a verb. In this one, you have three. You have for this, of the, and with the, which is not correct. You need two. You need two points with which to establish a straight geometric level playing field of communication contract. And then you put your verb in. Otherwise, the mathematical interface does not work. I will put in the comments, uh, I, I personally, I'll tell you this, I don't use questions in correct sentence structure because of the simple fact that when you ask someone a question, you want something from them. And when I'm doing correct sentence structure claims, I mean, the real deal with 12B7 through 12B1, the flag mechanics and the stamp mechanics and all that stuff, I don't ask anybody any questions because I don't want anything from anyone. I'm making statements of fact. So I don't use questions. However, I can understand why some people would. So I'll show you in the comments exactly how I teach writing a question. So uh, Jason, if you look in the comments section, you'll see I wrote a sentence. For this claim of the facts is with the knowledge by the claimant. And then backwards that would be for the claimant of the knowledge is with the facts by this claim. Now in order to make it a sentence, what you would do is you would take the verb and put it at the beginning of the sentence. So now it reads, is for this claim of the facts with the knowledge by the claimant? Question mark. That's how you would do it. And then backwards it would be, is for this claimant of the knowledge with the facts by this claim? So what you're doing is putting the thinking first. It functions much in the same way a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word functions. It functions in the part as a particle of a negation because you're putting the thinking first before there's something to think about. And in a question, i.e., that means there's no closure because you're putting the thinking first. Hence, that's why it's a question. That's why you're putting the verb first in correct sentence structure because you're putting the thinking first because you're asking a question. There's no closure. When you make a correct sentence structure statement, you put the verb in a very specific place and it has a function. And it's firmly set. The thinking is moving the cause and the concern into the possessive. When you ask a question, you put it at the beginning because there's no closure because you're asking a question. Hope that helps. Okay. 
I don't mean to sound redundant, but will the courts acknowledge proper syntax grammar? Although they're using adverse verb. Well, I can't really say what the courts are going to do or which courts you're talking about. I assume you're talking about foreign vessels and dry dock, and I don't really have anything to do with them, so I don't know what they will do or what they won't do. I just know what I do. And my court uses correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. And your court can too if you so choose to learn this grammar. Um, my standard procedure with these videos is to take them down because the value of them is for the now space. I try to create a value for them so that people will watch to see when I go live and then they'll come on and then they'll either take the time to study my videos, which the answer to your question is in my videos uh, on my YouTube channel so that I get viewership. Um, sometimes I do keep them up. What I, what I sometimes do is take these videos and then I will edit them and put some bonus content in them and post them back up. So that, that's perhaps what I'll do with this one. I'll take out the part about the question that you asked and then uh, I'll, I'll republish it. So let me think about that. For the voidance of the perjury by the claimant, uh, that sentence is not correct simply because there's a cause of concern and then you put an authority before the verb. The authority always, always, always comes at the end. The cause comes at the beginning and there's one cause and the authority comes at the end and there's one authority. The cause never comes after the verb. The authority never comes before the verb. How does one change from their court to move to your very own court? Uh, to my court? How does someone move to my court? Well, I would have to invite them if they want to come to my court. Notice I didn't say summons. Because the correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar is comprised of three parts. The first part is correct sentence structure communication, which is the way you write, the way you position your facts. The next part is parse, which is basically looking up the etymology of each of the particles of the words and finding out what the earliest nativity root meanings are. And the third part, of course, is syntax, which basically gives closure to, in the fiction, what modification is happening, and in the fact, what is a positional, what is a lodial, what is a fact, banking these uh, mathematical values onto the words. And then the authority of all that, of course, is the last word, grammar. I'm looking for the next part. I want to state and claim. I have noticed that I'm taking part in a crime with a Vasily. Thank you for answering, but I see what's going on. Watch your beginning videos. Sure. Yeah, jump in any place and just start watching. And um, I can't really say how long it would take someone to learn this. It took me about a thousand hours before I was able to even use this at all in any fashion. And um, Well, I've heard the number thrown around that some people say, well, you need 200 hours. Well, maybe for the fast learners, but not for me. 200 hours wasn't anywhere near enough for me to be able to actually have the confidence to use this in a real life setting. 
And by real life setting, I mean just someone on the street or a judge or a police officer or any Vasili to be able to give them closure on the grammar face to face, eyeball to eyeball, in person, in a now space setting. Um, because that's what uh, has to happen if you're going to get a rudimentary conversancy in this grammar. For the Coffee and Correct Grammar Broadcast YouTube channel of the Jason Matthew Glass is with the gratitude by the student. Thank you very much, Colon Brandon. And uh, what I would like to offer you for that sentence is you see the colon in front of the J in my name and the B in your name, those are not necessary because you've already positioned uh, the names with positionals and lodials. So it basically reads, for the coffee and correct grammar broadcast YouTube channel of the for the Jason Matthew of the glass period. And you put a period in there, so you've stopped the sentence. So you got you definitely have to take that period out of there. is with the gratitude by this student, by the Brandon hyphen John, and then of the, your last name. So yeah, you don't, you don't need the, the colons in front of those names in that setting, in that scenario. Well done though. The, uh, the sequencing of positionals and lodials is, is definitely correct. And of course, I know this platform does not allow it, but if you were to underline your compound facts and underline Jason hyphen Matthew colon space glass, underline those whole things, then those things would be taken as one entire fact and they would not interfere with the sequencing of the positionals. And there's more closure to that. Um, in a video that I did, I think it was called For the Mechanics of the Bottom Line, where I talk about how I use the underline. The underline, I call it bottom line, because of course underline is no contract. In this past year, I've gotten actually some very good comment, uh, compliments from people where I'll have a consultation with them. I'll have a video consultation and uh, <clears throat> I'll give them a, a pop quiz about syntax or something. And they'll do very well on the test. And I'll say, where did you learn? You know, did you have a tutor? If you don't mind me asking. And they'll say, no, I was just watching your videos. And I'm like, wow. I must be doing something correct if people are able to learn this technology, 80% of this technology just from watching the videos, 80 to 85% actually. It's, uh, it's the best compliment in the world actually with regards to this, that someone could actually get, you know, that type, that level of closure from, from my YouTube channel. And to think that three or more years ago that this YouTube channel did not exist and this information was not out there. And that's why I think this is, uh, I'm actually, you know, very proud of it because it, this information does not exist anywhere else in the form that I put it in. Of course, you know, you have the Colin David Eichmann, Wynn, Colin Miller videos, the classics, um, that of course I've studied thousands and thousands of hours of those. But what I've found with those videos is that he goes into how you do something, but he doesn't ever really tell you why you do it. So that's, that was my task, I feel. Um, I felt that was my task because the how is already out there. I had to show why and give closures to why these things happen the way they happen or why they work the way they work. 
And of course, I must give all credit um, where credit is due to my mentor, my brother, Colin Raven, hyphen Farhad, hyphen Tohidi, Colin Afarin, who guided me along my own path on one on one grammar workshops to learn this technology. <clears throat> As they say, the student is a direct reflection and mirror of the teacher, the attitude, the demeanor, the teaching method and the knowledge level is all directly reflective of the teacher and vice versa. And you will find that 100% accurate without fail, without fail. And I have Raven to thank for that. For well, the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the perjury of the bank by the authority. MZ Page. So we have the cause, which is the claimant's knowledge. And then we have what is the claimant's knowledge concerned with? The facts. Very good. We have the two points. We draw a straight line, the cause, the concern, and we put our verb of the thinking in there. And then we move into the possessive. What is possessing the facts? The perjury. And what is the perjury concerned with? The bank. Now is where the, the mistake comes in because you cannot have an of the and an of by the. You cannot have a concern and then an authority. The reason why is because every correct sentence structure has to start with for the, of the. Like you have here, you have for the claimant's knowledge of the facts. For the, of the. Now when you read this backwards, you have for the authority with the bank, which is not correct. The with the, the possessive comes after the verb and before the authority. So that is not correct. You would have to have a possessive in between the of the bank and by the authority. Uh, the other thing is you're saying claimant's knowledge. We don't know who the claimant is. And is this a claim? Because I don't see the word claim in there anywhere. If you're going to say claimant's knowledge, then you have to put the word claim in there. Otherwise, we're just assuming that it's a claim. So logically, the word claim would have to go in there somewhere as well. And who is the authority? We don't know who the authority is. I mean, this is making me think that the bank is the authority. So I would suggest uh, studying... Um, I'll help you out by looking, I'll save you some time and I'll look up the correct sentence structure sequencing videos that I have and I'll post up the links in there for you so that you can study how to create a correct sentence structure. And there's a third one. There's three of them. There's more than that on the YouTube channel, but there's three, three of them for you. One of them is, is myself explaining it, and the other two are uh, certifications from Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller as to the correct structure of correct sentence structure, and which another word would be concatenation, the concatenation of the correct sentence structure. And the thing about adding, do you... Hold on a minute. Do you continually add and make adjustments to your dictionary? Well, as uh, new knowledge and new closures come into play, uh, of course, I have to stop and correct uh, my dictionary. Yes. So the answer, the short answer is yes. Uh, with new knowledge, one, it is contingent upon one to correct something if it is not correct. And so the answer is yes. As far as uh, the avoiding adding a name, I know people like to use nom de guerres and people like to hide. Well, I don't mean, I'm not referring to you, MZ Page, but 
people like to hide behind, you know, names on the internet and things like that that aren't their own. And one thing in correct sentence structure that I've found that I had to overcome myself is that using your correct name and putting yourself out there can be a scary thing. It can be very scary. This is who I am. This is what I look like. Everybody right now, I'm in the public right now. I, I have my name up here, my correct name. Everything's out there for everyone to see. And that's a scary uh, scenario for some people to be held to that level of, of whatever, scrutiny. That's why I'm very strict about um, making sure that I keep the noise out of this channel, keep the trolls away, and, and stick to the subject matter, for sure. There's definitely um, two core factors with quantum grammar. Uh, number one is the now space, and number two is closure. So I'm with the position that there's plenty of now space to get the closure that one needs or that one wants. I don't know how to change it. Had the account for years. I agree. My name is dumb. It's years old. Um, of course, I, I didn't say it was dumb. I didn't say anything like that, actually. And I wouldn't say something like that. Um... I was just making the point of the nom de guerre. I've met people who really do not want to put themselves out in the public like that. And that's, you know, that's fine. These are also people that feel they can come on any YouTube channel and say whatever they want to. If you scroll back through my YouTube videos, there is one guy, uh, one particular guy, and excuse my language, his name was Harry Nutsack. And you can go back through my videos and I think, uh, well actually I'll find it. Let me find it and I'll post it up for you. Uh, this was an amazing experience for me in dealing with a troll because at first he was coming at me with all these goofy questions that had nothing to do with me or what I did. And so I offered the guy a video consultation and he was all for it. He wanted to do a video consultation. And then all of a sudden when it came down to it, he refused. He backed out. It was hilarious. I'll put it up for you if you're interested in it. Let me find it. It was actually a couple years ago. It's pretty old. Will regular commercial courts recognize quantum grammar if I use it in my communications? Well, Jason, I cannot make a claim for someone else, so I don't uh, have an answer for that. I mean, that's something you'd have to find out, isn't it? If you're asking me to speculate on it, to guess, I would say no. However, having said no, and this is outside of the grammar, so I'm just offering this for pro bono for educational and entertainment purposes only, it doesn't matter. How can the fiction ever recognize a fact? It doesn't matter. To me, to me, it doesn't matter. They can do what they want in their little court. That's them. That's fiction. Nothing to do with me. That's why people talk about should I send my live life claim to the Department of Defense or should I send my live life claim to the Port Authority? Should I send my live life claim to this place or that place? I mean, that, that's completely up to you. I mean, if you want a contract with the fiction in that capacity, that's up to you. But fiction can never meet fact. It, it just doesn't. So logically, why would you do that? 
So if anybody has any specific grammar questions or if you would like to apply for my confidential video workshops, you can send me an email at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and I'll set up a brief 10 to 15 minute video consultation for you so that uh, we can see if uh, you qualify for the workshops or if I can uh, answer your grammar question. My bank banned me for not wearing a mask a year ago. I keep receiving letters. I'm sorry to hear that. That's definitely outside of my, uh, my curriculum here. You too, Brandon. You have a good day. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day, everyone.